Hey, I'm Gary Katz from This is Carpentry Magazine and the Katz Roadshow. We published an article oh, years ago written by Stephen Phipps, and I think Steve published the same article in JLC Magazine at one point. The article is on the quarter, quarter, quarter system. That's what Steve called it. It's a system for making drawers and boxes. You cut a dado on one side, you cut a rabbit in the other, and you get a lock joint. And this would be the front of your drawer, and this would be the side of your drawer. So it can, the front can never, ever come off. The really great thing about the quarter, quarter, quarter system is you make all your cuts, every single one, with exactly the same setup, including cutting a groove in the bottom edge of the drawer on the inside of the sides and the front for a quarter inch drawer bottom. And if you want to, you can even make a half inch drawer bottom with exactly the same setup. I mean, this kind of stuff really excites me. I'm not really a woodworker. I'm a production finished carpenter. I have to make a lot of cabinets and drawers have always been a pain in the neck for me. I don't know how to dovetail yet. Maybe before I'm 70, I'll learn, but I'm running out of time. But boy, this system works really well and the drawers are bulletproof. You cannot take them apart. Let me show you how this works. First thing I'll do is I'll run some pieces through so I can show you how to make the cuts and then I'll back up and I'll show you how to do this setup. So I have already pre-cut the pieces. I've got two sides. I always make the sides the full length of the drawer, the depth of the drawer, however you want to think about it. And I've got the ends cut too, the front and the back ends. I make the ends a half inch shorter because a quarter and a quarter has to fit inside the dado. The first cut I like to make is on the sides because the sides are the easiest to cut. They get a dado right on each end. And then they get a groove in the bottom edge for the drawer. You'll notice I always use push blocks when I run the sides because they're pretty long and you've got to make sure that they're in contact with the table saw all the way in order to get a consistent cut. If the groove isn't cut consistently, your drawer bottom's not going to fit in there. And that's a bummer to find out later. So that is the two sides. They're actually the easiest pieces to cut because all the grooves and the dados are in the same face. I've got the dado for the two ends and I've got the groove for the bottom of the drawer. But the end pieces, they're cut differently. To cut the ends, I have to run them through on edge. Same table saw setup, nothing gets changed at all. I run them through on edge and I'll end up with a rabbit that's a quarter inch on each piece. So I'll flip the piece grab it the other side, and then I'm going to cut the groove. And this is the part that gets tricky. It used to confuse me to no end until I did it enough times. Remember, the groove is cut in the back side, the long tail end of the rabbit, not in the face of the rabbit. If you do that, it won't work, trust me. The first cut I make is with the workpiece flat against the fence, vertical, and I run it right through the blade to cut a quarter inch rabbit. And then I flip the piece over and do the other side exactly the same. And then I take the piece and I lay it down on the back of the rabbit. So the long end of the rabbit is against the table saw. So now I've got all the pieces cut and you can see again how this works. Here's the groove on the side for the drawer. And there's the little dado and the rabbit from the side slips right in like this. So the rabbit goes in to the dado and the groove is on the back side, the front and the back. So then the drawer bottom can slide right in. And the joint is really tight. There's just enough room in there for glue. And that's all that's left. All I have to do is cut a drawer bottom for that drawer. And if I use quarter inch plywood, and I mean full quarter inch, just like I'm using Baltic birch plywood for the sides, if I use, and it's perfect, it's exactly a half an inch. If I use a full quarter inch plywood for the bottom, everything works out 
perfectly. Now I said earlier, you can also use half inch plywood for the bottom if you're building a drawer that needs to be really strong or a box, or if you wanna bolt it or screw it down to something like I did for the box I built for my boat, you may wanna use half inch plywood. And if you do, same setup. All you have to do is take the plywood and run it through your setup here on edge and you'll rabbit the plywood all the way around. It'll slide right into that quarter inch groove, just like quarter inch plywood, but it'll be flush with the bottoms of the sides all the way around perfectly. So here's the groove for the bottom. So if I put this half inch plywood into that groove, look at that, perfectly flush on the bottom end, fits in the groove perfectly. So now I've got a half inch drawer bottoms. The setup on the saw is the most critical part of this whole system. If you get that down and you get it down real good, man, you will just love this because you'll be able to knock out drawers and boxes just that fast. I'm going to lift the blade up out of the table saw so I can remove it and show you what I've done here. But before I do, let me show you what I've done with the blade before we do anything. I'm going to set the calipers right on the outside edge of the tooth, the cutting edge of the tooth. And look, it's exactly a quarter of an inch. And that doesn't mean you can take your dado blades, and I'm just talking about the two outer blades. You can't just take them and sandwich them together and expect to get exactly a quarter of an inch. It'll be under that. Let me show you what happens. I'll take this blade off. So check this out. I've got two pieces of paper sandwiched in between those blades, regular paper. And if you look at these and measure them with a dial caliper, you'll see that they measure almost exactly a 64th of an inch. And that's how much I had to grow. I had to spread those two blades in order to hit that quarter inch. And trust me, you've got to do that. You can't just sandwich the blades together and expect this to work if you're working with exact half inch plywood. If you're working with something else that's not Baltic birch, yeah, you may be fooling around coming up with some funny dado number, but this is the system I use. It's exactly a quarter of an inch. Now let's put these blades back in where they were. So now we have the dado blade set. We have two more things we have to set. We have to set the fence up, the exact distance from the, from the blade, quarter of an inch. And we have to set up the height of the blade. That has to be a quarter of an inch too. You can do this several different ways. You can take a piece of quarter inch plywood and then lower the blade until the blade is just a hair higher than the plywood. Take another piece of anything, any kind of scrap, lay it on top and push it down pretty snug and drop the blade until that piece just kisses the quarter inch plywood underneath. And do that a few times. Go ahead and crank the blade up a little bit. It'll raise the piece, it'll raise the top piece of hair and you'll feel it. And then drop it down until it just kisses the top of this quarter inch piece. And now your blade is exactly a quarter inch off the table. So the next thing to do is to set up the distance between the blade and the fence. And to do that, you can use the same quarter inch plywood. Just bring it right up against that blade and snug the fence up against it. And when you slide the piece through, it should just start to move the blade. It shouldn't really move the blade. It should just kind of rock the blade a little bit like it's doing right here. It's just rocking the blade a little bit. If it starts moving the blade, then it's too tight. If the blade doesn't move at all, then it's too loose. And that's it. I want to look at dial calipers for a second here because for years these things just, boy, they were the bane of my life because I could never figure out how to use them. If you're a carpenter like me, chances are you're not going to be that comfortable working with a metric or, an, or a, um, a dial caliper that works in thousandths of an inch. This dial caliper actually reads down to a 64th of an inch. You don't see it because it, the smallest increment you see is a 16th of an inch. There's 15 sixteenths, there's a 16th, there's an eighth. 
there's a quarter. But it also, in between those numbers, the big line in between, that's a 32nd of an inch, and the smaller lines are 64ths. So what's a 64th of an inch? Well, I just showed you two pieces of notebook paper. And that's really as close as I need to get with the kind of work I do. It's kind of like a 64th of an inch is like a glue joint. Now, this caliper is digital. You saw me using it earlier, and it will read in fractions of an inch too, down to a 64th of an inch. The advantage to a digital caliper is, it'll tell you exactly where you are, especially once you're over an inch. Now let's take those pieces over to my assembly table and I'll show you how to put these drawers together. So here's our four pieces. I like to dry fit these first just to make sure that I cut the bottom the right size. The bottom slides right in, just like so. Let me flush these up and flush this one up. There we go. And then this side goes on. Perfect fit. So let me show you how I measure for the bottom. It's really easy to figure out the size of the bottom. All you have to do is measure the length of the two ends, because that's the exact width of the bottom. And I like to subtract maybe a sixteenth of an inch for that, just to leave a little bit of room in this groove for glue. Now, the length of the bottom is another story. The best way to measure that is just to take your tape measure and push it into the groove to the dado on one end and measure to the dado on the opposite end. You can see that measures 17 and a half inches, kind of tight. So I'd cut the length of the bottom a sixteenth of an inch less, 17 and 7 sixteenths. So I like to glue these up when they're flat. I'll put a little glue on each shoulder and I'll put a little bit of glue on the top of that groove. And I even like to glue the bottom, so I know, I know, that's a big deal. But for a small drawer, I don't think the bottoms are going to change that much, si that much in size because of the humidity or wood movement. So I like to glue the bottoms in too, especially on a box where I want the box to be super rigid and, and kind of structural. It's not going to come apart. I like to glue both sides of the grooves and the dados. So as I slip the bottom in, it'll get plenty of glue on it. And then I can take the side or the ends and slip them in, both sides, and slide the bottom in, and it's kind of self-aligning. Once the bottom goes into that groove, it adjusts the ends so that they're flush and tight. And then the last side can go on. All you need to clamp is the front and the back of the drawer. You don't have to clamp anywhere in here because your joint is now getting pressured from just the two ends and that's it. You don't need big long clamps. You don't need four clamps or six clamps. All you need are two for the front and the back. Once the glue sets up or if you're kind of impatient and you don't want to wait for the glue to set up, you can tack this I'm using a 21 gauge, one inch nail right here. I'm going to shoot right through the end grain of the side. And the nail is going to penetrate the tongue on the end and lock this thing together. So I'm just going to put my nail in real close to the edge of the side. And that's it. I can pull these clamps off right now because it's all pinned together right through that kind of a little tongue and groove lock joint. That's the quarter, quarter, quarter system. Some of you are going to think right away, wow, that's so cool. I need to take one of my old table saws and dedicate it to making drawers. Put that quarter inch dado blade in there, get it set up just perfect and never touch it. And that is why I have two portable table saws in my shop. <laughs>